Hey everybody, this is Pat Giamarco of PWG Marketing and Toledo SEO for Growth. I just wanted to put together a real quick screen capture on a presentation I gave a couple of weeks ago to a local chamber about the top Google ranking factors as they exist today, as we know them to be today, uh, you know, September of 2017. Now I say that because they could change and more than likely will change. It could be tomorrow, it could be a couple weeks from now, it could be a couple months from now, but one of the things that we do know is that it's going to change. So as of today, I want to kind of give you some guidelines for you to keep in mind when you're working on your website's organic findability or search engine optimization or SEO. Okay. Number one is under this umbrella called content. You know, we know content is king today, but what exactly does that mean? What exactly is Google looking for when we say, you know, you should be blogging or, um, you know, content is really important today. And what I say is the lines between search engine optimization and content, they haven't just necessarily blurred. They're almost gone. If you're not consistently producing relevant, educational, compelling content that is helpful for your ideal clients, you're going to have a tough time ranking for certain keywords. Number one, we want to be helpful, but number two, we create content um, for the search engines as well. So I want to talk a little bit about what, what we mean by, by content or what we think Google means by, by content. Absolutely, keyword research and keyword usage, you know, using that keyword research insight on your website, on each respective web page is really, really important. Page title remains the strongest relevance signal to Google. I put the little code here. So if you go, if you've got a PC, and you right click on your home page or really any page of your website and go down to view page source that is all the HTML code that makes up that particular page of your site and if you go usually it's up at the top up at the top somewhere but you're gonna see carrot title carrot and then carrot close title carrot that is your page title that is controllable by you, especially if you have a content management system, you tell Google what your page titles are for each and every respective page of your website. This is probably one of the things that I see most often that this low hanging fruit called page titles isn't being optimized by by businesses. Um, you know, when I see a home page with the page title of home and the business's name, it kind of makes me cringe because uh, I don't think anybody is searching on home to find what you do, your products or your services. So, so if you do have home within that title, um, you know, carrot, title, carrot, you've got a big opportunity to actually tell Google what kind of content they're going to find on that page okay couple of things to keep in mind as it relates to page titles it, they should be more than 15 characters a page title needs to be more than 15 characters but less than 60 characters anything more than 60 characters and Google is going to more than likely chop it off or truncate it so in order to be um, sort of best practices is between 15 and 60 characters and really each and every page title needs to be unique. If you have the same page title for each and every page of your website, that's another opportunity based on keyword research. And it really, your page title needs to describe the content that is on the page. Okay? And that's where this keyword usage come, comes into play um, in the eyes of Google. Now, I would try and use that keyword two times within the page title, one time being as close to the beginning as you possibly can, okay? So this all stems from keyword research. You want your home page to rank for a certain 
keyword or phrase, we need to use that word or phrase in our page title twice if we can, once as early in the page title as we, as we can get it, and then multiple times without keyword stuffing it, you know, use it naturally on, on the page that you're trying to rank that keyword for. Okay, so page title remains the strongest relevant signal to Google. And again, I, I see this being, this opportunity not being taken advantage of uh, quite a bit, quite a bit. The second thing I want to talk to you about is content length. This slide and the next one kind of go hand in hand with each other, but, but I will say there's, there was a, a study done, a really significant study where, um, Brian Dean from Backlinko and a couple other organizations looked at a million search engine result pages just to try and figure out what did they have in common? Why did Google reward them within the first 10 organic search results of a page? And what they found was content length actually had a lot to do with it. They deciphered that of the top 10 organic search results, on average, those search results had about 1,900 words on that page. So then this kind of falls in line with what Google did back in 2011 with Panda. They started really to focus on, and, and almost penalizing websites that had really light content. Uh, you know, if you understand what realm Google competes on with Bing and Yahoo and AOL for search engines, you understand that their main objective is to serve up the most relevant search results as quickly as they possibly can. And to be helpful for people. So it makes sense that they would start to reward web pages that have a significant number of words that are comprehensive and complete in nature. And that sort of gets me to my, the next slide here, comprehensiveness. You know, if your web page is 200, 250 words, there's no way in the eyes of Google that that's going to be a comprehensive web page. It's going to cover all the things that you need to cover under a certain subject matter. You're not going to answer any questions. You're really not diving deeply in giving the searcher a meaty search result. You're not going to accomplish the searcher's task in 200 or 250 words. Now, if it's closer to 2,000 words and over, and it's comprehensive in nature, and it's helpful, and we're answering questions, well, Google is probably going to reward you for that really good, meaty, comprehensive piece of content. More so it's, than it's going to reward a web page that has 200 or 250 characters on it. So take a look at your website, your home page, and certainly your really your cornerstone products and services pages. If you are hovering in the 250, 300, 350 word realm, you may have a big opportunity in front of you where you can sort of beef up the content on that page. And I'm not saying throw words on a page and then forget about it. This is well-written, high-quality content based on what you know of, you know, the pain points of your ideal client. But answer their questions. Think, think about if you were the searcher, and you had a question, or you had a problem, what would you want to find on your web page? And then go about creating great quality, meaty content around, uh, around answering those questions and solving those problems. You will, over time, be rewarded by Google if that is your, your approach to, to content. Okay, so let's get into some technical things. We're not going to talk about, you know, HTML code necessarily. No, we're not. <laughs> but I do want to kind of give you some technical things that I want you to be aware of and actually, you know, run your site through some of the tools that I, that I give you here. So technical SEO. Let's talk a little bit about page, spe page speed. Just said a couple of minutes ago, if we understand 
the world in which Google competes with their competitors will understand some of these algorithmic changes that we've seen over the last four or five years. The first one here is page speed, page speed. So they want to serve up relevant search results as quickly as possible. They know that if a site takes three or four or five seconds to load, doesn't sound like a long time, but it really is when we're talking about the world of, of digital marketing. If it takes three, four, five seconds, people are going to bounce off of that page and not get their question answered. So what I want you to shoot for is run your website through this URL right here, gtmetrics.com. It's a great tool I use all the time. If it says that your site loads in less than a second, you're doing a great job. If it's more than a second or two or three, take a look at the recommendations that GT Metrics gives you. There's some things that you can do to help your web pages load faster. Things such as caching, um, compressing the images is probably one of the biggest things that I see are blog post pictures or just images that are used throughout the website, they're too big. They're just too big. If you compress them and lower the resolu resolution and the size of those images, it'll help our pages load a lot quicker. So take a look at gtmetrics.com. Run your website through that tool and, and see what it says and go about you know, starting to fix some of the issues that you have around page speed. Really, we're looking for our pages, our website to load in less than a second. Less than a second. Number two, mobile friendliness. This was like three years ago, I believe. Mobile Geddon was the talk of a town. It was in April. I know that. It was two or three years ago in April. In this case, what it said was Google is rewarding sites that are mobile friendly. You know, people are going to websites today on their mobile devices, sometimes a lot more frequently than we are on our phones and our, our PCs. So take a look and see if your website is mobile friendly. Go to search.google.com backslash test backslash mobile dash friendly. If it's not mobile friendly, I highly recommend you get a mobile friendly version of your website. Ultimately today, if, if it's not a mobile friendly version, your website does not come up in organic search results on a phone or another mobile device. Okay, so it's almost like you don't exist uh, from a mobile standpoint if your site isn't mobile friendly. So I highly recommend that. The next one is User experience, click-through rate. I, I've seen it in my own kind of uh, studies here where Google might reward you and put you on the, on the first page, the first search engine result page, but if, if the clicks aren't there, uh, if your website, ultimately click-through rate is a signal of relevance. If your website isn't getting the clicks, Google thinks it's not relevant to the searcher's task. It's not helping the searcher and it will drop you like a stone. So click-through rate is going to be a really important factor, something that we're always going to, we're going to want to keep our eye on um, is the number of times in comparison to the number of times we are served up as a relevant ser search result, how many times is that link, that result clicked on. And meta descriptions can help you amplify your click-through rate. Okay, we haven't talked about metadata or um, meta descriptions yet, but it's the 160 characters under the blue hyperlink on a search engine result page. That's marketing copy. That's sales copy. Uh, if you're not getting the click-through rate that you want to see or need to see, take a look at your meta descriptions and try and rewrite them um, in much more of a marketing or sales uh, capacity. It doesn't necessarily directly relate to SEO, but indirectly, if we can change our meta descriptions and improve click-through rate, then we're going to be better for it. And then, so this is kind of uh, just kind of summarizing what I wanted to kind of go over with you today. Um, not necessarily 10 trends, but I probably gave you five or six trends that I want to keep, I want you to keep your eye on 
uh, when it comes to Google and search engine optimization here, okay? Also wanted to kind of give you a, uh, an opportunity to take advantage of a local online presence audit. This is my full audit. I, I, I give some lighter versions of this. This is the full audit. I'll take a look at your website. I take a look at Google My Business, your on-page SEO, your content. I'll give you a content assessment, keyword research, social media participation, citation profile scan, online reputation elements, and I give you solid recommendations that you can take to your SEO or, or somebody else that is handling your website uh, for them to execute. It's going to give me, it's going to take me about two weeks. It's $499. It's a one-time fee, and I'll give you all the insight you need to improve your online findability. Like I said, I go for anywhere from social media to citations, to keyword research, to on-page on page SEO elements. And if you want to take advantage of that, shoot me an email at patrick at pwgmarketing.com or give me a call at 419-329-4256. All right, this ends my little uh, screen capture presentation for you. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, if, if you have questions, if you want to talk about something, go into more depth in, in anything that I talked about here today, just, just give me a call. Again, 419-329-4256. Thanks.